Yeah! Oh, come on, it grazed my ear. Give me a break. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the world of Pang. What is Pang, you say? Well, Pang is a world where you shoot balloons and shoot it again and shoot it again and try not to get hit by balloons because they will kill you. Um, Pang, also known as Pumping World, uh, which I think sounds like Popping World uh, in Japan, um, is also known as Buster Brothers in North America, which is a good choice. Buster Brothers sounds so much cooler than Pang. Like, what the hell is Pang? Pang is like, maybe it's the sound that the balloons make when they pop. I don't know. We're going to be checking this game out today, both on the arcade and on the Turbo Graphics CD, which I am super excited about. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and slam a few quarters in here and uh, get going. So we'll do four quarters maybe on the arcade machine here. We'll see how long it takes. And uh, after we've uh, checked the game out here, we'll go ahead and see what the uh, Turbo Graphics home console version is like. So let's just go ahead and start in Japan. Start where all great things start. The world of Japan. So here's Pang. You shoot these like balloon popping harpoons. And as soon as you hit a balloon, it pops into smaller bits. And so you're basically trying to not get hit by balloons and continue to pop them. And you get power-ups along the way, kind of like Arkanoid or something like that. So this game's like a mix of like Space Invaders and Arkanoid. Oh, God. Okay, I got those sweet, sweet peaches. They kept me alive somehow. I think I had a shield. That's why I was glowing there for a bit. And boom, look how badass he looks. I'm in a balloon hunting mission. I'm gonna kill all the stinking balloons out there. So, um, I guess, uh, oh, and if you get the uh, the clock, then time kind of like slows down. It's like a, a time slowing thing. Um, I think it uses it automatically. Otherwise, I don't know how to use anything. Um, yeah, see, I'm just sort of picking up things automatically here. Oh God, a balloon hit me in the face and almost killed me. And, oh my god, I can't fire. Oh, jeez. I got some kind of, like, D power up there. Oh my god, there's a bird! There's a bird! Yeah, we, we killed a bird. They only contracted us to, to uh, pop balloons. We killed a bird. So, uh, Pang here is almost identical. In fact, I believe it is identical to another old... Oh, jeez. Uh, balloon hit me in the face and I died. Yeah, uh, It is identical to uh, a Japanese game called uh, oh my god what was that oh my god there's no way we're gonna survive this are you crazy <laughs> jesus <laughs> that was like a pangtastrophe oh my god oh there's a little it's the little ones that are actually like so vicious because the, the the big ones bounce high but the little ones oh look at this time has frozen okay kill all the little ones kill the little ones kill the babies oh god <laughs> Okay, anyway, as I fail at this, um, Pang is similar, identical, in fact, to uh, a game for the Japanese MSX called uh, Cannonball, I think I think was the name of it? Cannonball? I, it's hard for me to look at my notes right now because this game is so intense. Um, so, I mean, you got to be ballsy to go ahead and just take somebody else's game and call it yours, but that's what they did. I think Cannonball, however, was also produced by Hudson Soft, which is the company that made this game. So the developer sort of had the legal rights to do it, I guess. You know, he wasn't going to get in any trouble for doing it. But to just take someone else's game, you know, like, it, it's it's ballsy. I'll, I'll tell you that. It's it's balls In a game about balls, it is ballsy. Um, there was a port of this game on the ZX Spectrum called... Uh, oh, there we go. We got a gun. We got a gun. We can shoot the... Oh, my God. And the ball still got us. Man. This game's actually really tricky because you cannot make mistakes. You really cannot make mistakes. You can't afford to make mistakes. Okay. Oh, look at that. Interesting. Oh, it, like, it like locks off the whole half of the map. Cool, but I will take the gun. Yeah, now, now, now we're popping balls with style. Come here. Oh, man, I got a power-up that got rid of my... My cool thing, shoot. Um, this game also kind of reminds me a bit of Bomberman, you know? How, like, in Bomberman... Oh, God, save me! In Bomberman, there were, like, a lot of, like, fun power-ups. Oh, look, we can totally kill this guy. Idiot, he just walked into it. Uh, that's a pretty good, uh... Pretty good power-up. Oh, and then we Indiana jones it over to the mainland. And now we're saving... Whatever this place is. Kamchatka or whatever. From the world of balls. Oh, now there's... And now there's obstacles in the middle of the map. Which, uh, is going to screw us. Oh, God! Oh, my God! Balls everywhere! <laughs> Damn it. Um, all right. 
So uh, the North American uh, release of this was called Buster Bros. It's actually kind of interesting that on Turbo Graphics they called this game Buster Bros as well because the Turbo Graphics is an awesome system, but it never really broke into North America. You know, that was like one of the faults of it. It like it just didn't really ever sort of make it into mainstream North America, and uh, and so yeah, it's interesting they went with the North American name. But, uh, you know, Buster Bros, it, it describes the game a bit better. I guess it's sort of two bros going on a, a balloon hunting adventure. I mean, there could be a second player here. This game, you can play it co-op. So that's one of the things about it. Um, but, of course, it's just me for today. So we'll have to use our imaginations and imagine that... Oh, my God, I almost died right there. Imagine there's someone playing with me. This game is very strategic. It's way more strategic than I thought it would be. God, oh, my God, I almost screwed up right there. When I first uh, when I first read about this game, all right, let's go down here, and boom! You know, maybe they called it Pang because they were trying to like reference Pong. You know, it's like one letter off. It's you know like it, maybe there's a bit of like brand recognition there. They're like, well, if we call it Pang, oh my god, oh my god, how am I supposed to survive this? Okay, I just took one to the butt, and I'm dead. I'm dead. There's no way out of this. Oh my god! Oh, I almost survived that. I almost survived that. That would have been amazing oh my god all right oh god here it comes again here it comes again get the shield oh survive just run for it run for it marty okay okay oh there was two there oh my god and they cornered me damn it this game is challenging okay do i want that explosive yes i do oh and i'm, I'm dead already that's okay these, these levels are really like puzzles because it's like there's the same power-ups every single time. Oh my god. Okay, let's just just pop as many as we can and, and run run for it. Okay, that, that worked out pretty good. I think we got this level now. I think we got this level. Boom! 1600 a balloon. Man, busting makes me feel good. Uh, oh, <laughs> there we go. So yeah, Buster Brothers, Tale of Two Brothers going around busting. Busting balloons, because busting makes them feel good. Uh, I mean, I guess. I, I assume they're also doing it for the money. It's probably uh, the other big motivating factor there. All the insane wealth to be found in uh, the balloon busting biz. Some kind of money's involved under the table. Who knows? These guys are shady. Shady AF. Because, um, like, who goes around busting balloons just for, like, you know, out of, out of the goodness of their heart? You know, that's, that's hard work, balloon busting. My God. Thank God for, like, being able to credit feed this game and have, like, infinite continues, because, like, I would not be able to get very far. Which actually bodes very poorly for us when we check out the home port of this, when we check out the Turbo Graphics uh, CD version. Um, oh my god. <laughs> and what kind of dude, what kind of dude gets killed by a balloon touching him? Can we just talk about that for a second? It, it's, it's like, oh no, a balloon touched me, I'm done for. You know, like, come on, man. There's, there could be women watching here, like, be a, be a bit, be a bit tougher, man. Like, come on, it's embarrassing. Okay, so my strategy is to leave the big ones kind of bouncing all over the place and just kind of like focus on like a couple of small ones at a time. And we'll do this. I feel like this is a pretty good strategy, actually. Oh, I walked into that one. I walked into that one. The only, the only downside is that you only have so much time. So we'll pop that, boom, okay. That works. Let's go ahead and pop that big boy. Pop that big boy. Pop that big boy. Oh, now we have the gun. The power-ups are kind of like, it's, it's they kind of just like appear all over the map and it's hard sometimes to like not get a power-up. Like if you didn't want to get powered up, um, sometimes like you just have to like take the power-up because like there's nowhere to go. Like sometimes you just have to like walk into a power-up. Like I have to walk over here and I had to get that power-up. I guess I could have just waited, but then I'd just be killing time needlessly. Okay, let's do this. We only have 46 seconds left. Uh oh, okay, we got that. Get this guy. This game is all about timing and finesse, people. That's what I've figured out. Get that. 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 Oh, yeah, we're rocking it. All right, you want to see some ball popping action? You've come to the right place. And now we're off to Siam or whatever. Most of my world knowledge comes from playing Risk, so I'm just like, what country would that be? I don't know. Oh my god, this is this is terrible. Look at all the balls! Damn it. Okay. Interesting. Oh god. Oh my god. Maybe maybe it's not the same every time. Maybe the power-ups do differ. 
Well, we gotta kill all these little ones. It's the little ones that if you let the little ones build up, they're like freaking deadly. Oh, and there's grapes. In case you feel like some grapes. There we go, let's just keep doing this. Oh God, <laughs> it touched my toe. Bull, shenanigans, man. How, how, do, how does my guy like not able to like, a balloon touch my foot, ouch, I'm done for, holy crap. Okay, let's get this one. Oh my God, that was a mistake. Damn it. <laughs> So the dynamite's actually pretty dangerous because if you get it, it will like pop everything into the small balloons and that can literally kill you. Um, okay, so here we go. All right, there's there's a time, the clock that will stop time, damn it, and we're dead again. Can I break some of these things? These things are actually like not helping me. Oh my God, I almost died right there, oh my God. Yeah, I can't break those now. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. Okay, how, how much longer should we go here? Uh, I want to pass, let's pass like one more world if we can. And then we'll sort of pop over to the uh, home home version on the TurboGrafx CD. Um, I'm super excited to try the TurboGrafx CD today because uh, the TurboGrafx 16 is a system that I did not really get to play very much when I was growing up. I am from North America, and uh, as I said, you know, the TurboGrafx-16, it never really broke into North America the way uh, the developers were hoping it would. Oh, you son of a, you bastard. Oh, I missed the owl too, oh well. He passed the level. Yeah, off to balloon popping action. I am number one. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh my God. <laughs> It's like everything looks like it's going okay, and it's just like a mad panic to survive. That, and that is like my just my life in general. Uh, my life playing video games is like that's how that's how it always goes. Everything looks fine, and then there's a mad panic to survive. Okay, pop these guys. There we go. Pop this guy, and we'll pop. Oh God, he's coming for me! He's coming! Get him! Get him! There we go. Thank God. Eight stage. Wonder how many levels are in this game. You know what we should do? Okay, the next time we die, <laughs> which is now. Now I gotta lose two more lives before we're actually dead. Oh, okay. I'm not doing this on purpose, I swear. Okay, the next time we like really die, I'm going to uh, just uh, sort of start over and I'm gonna jump to the very end of the map to see what like the last level of the world looks like. Like we have shields and stuff. Like now we're rocking it. Let's go ahead and break this. Oh, maybe we can't. Okay, we'll figure out we'll figure out how to get those guys when the time comes. Uh oh, um, ow! Oh god, this thing is coming for me. Okay, let's break this. Oh, and time froze. I will take that. Bam! Slam it in the butt, Mr. Crabbo. Oh god, another crab has come for vengeance. <laughs> oh, and he sucked up the the ball hits. Okay, but how do I? But how does that work? Okay, now he's just gone. He's like, ah, I've helped you by breaking some balloons. Okay. Oh my God. Pop. Ah, there we go. Boom, easy. We're making our way to Australia. Soon enough we will die though. Um, oh my God. So the ladders actually like uh, really mix it up because you can't just like, oops, I'm stupid. Um, you can't just like walk. Oh God. Kill that thing. There we go. You can't just like walk over the ground anymore. You have to like, um, oh my God. You have to like climb over these ladders to get where you're going. Oh my God, oh, we're dead, <laughs> we're dead. That dynamite is not your friend, man. The dynamite is your enemy. Okay, well I'm missing everything. There we go, there we go. Oh, I got a shield. Oh, we'll take that. Okay, stay away from that dynamite. It, it looks like a power up, but it is death incarnate. Oh my God. Oh, this is it. We're done for. We're done for. Okay. Well, we got pretty far, I think. Okay, let's go ahead and enter our name in the high scoreboard. And then uh, slam in one more quarter and see what one of the last levels on this uh, baby looks like. Angkor Wat. So we successfully liberated a, f a couple of regions of the world from the tyranny of the, uh, of the evil balloon. And we got Jade. Okay, game over. 59,600 points. Go ahead and try and beat that. Beat that, people. All right. Slamming so in one more quarter before we hop over to the TurboGrafx-16 version. Oh my God, we like don't have enough time to get over there. Wait, go, go, keep going. No, go all, all the way over to North America. What are you doing? Why are you stopping? <laughs> ah. 
Okay, um, well that sucked. I wanted to go to the last level, but I guess we're in Barcelona. And... Huh. I mean, the levels don't seem that much harder, to be totally honest with you. They just seem like levels. I'm playing it a little sloppily, mind you. Wow. Oh god, oh god. Oh god. Oh god! Get into the safety zone! There's birds everywhere! Maybe it, like, sends more animals at you. Maybe that's, like, the trick of, like, how it gets harder. Because I guess the animals, like, break your lines and stuff. Oh, we just... That owl just totally committed suicide, man. All right, and we'll go ahead and this one. This level isn't that hard, though. Like, it doesn't feel, like, qualitatively harder than uh, the levels we were just playing. I mean, I guess... Oh, you can just walk into those animals? I thought they would kill you. <laughs> He's got, like, stars floating around his head. He's like, ah, yes, level 28. Easy. Okay, here we go. Now things are getting a little more different. What? What the hell is that? <laughs> okay. Well, careful about that happening, I guess. Oh my god, this is so intense. Okay, so now the levels are hard. I get it. So as, as the game goes on, um, the, the confines get smaller and smaller. Oh, it didn't come up this time. We actually have a shot here. Hey, oh, bo, 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 god. Okay, interesting. Well, um, so this has been Pang on the, uh, on the arcade. We're probably about to die any second now. And then we're going to go and adventure off and see what uh, Buster Bros is like on the TurboGrafx CD. So again, same game, it's just the home port. And this game has so many names. Pang, Pomping World, and called Buster Bros in North America. And on the TurboGrafx, it was called Buster Bros. So let's go ahead and check that out. And we'll see how the, um, how the home console edition sort of compares to the arcade. And actually, when I say the home console edition... TurboGrafx CD is going to be probably the best home console port you can find of this game. So uh, let's see what the best has to offer. All right, so here we are in the TurboGrafx CD version, and we are playing Buster Bros. As you can see by Hudson Soft, a couple years after the arcade edition, we're going to go ahead and press start. Now this game is identical, pretty much, to the arcade edition. So we're going to go ahead and we didn't we never made it to Australia. So let's kind of pick up where we left off really because why not? We we're on stage 4. And oh, and there you go. And, and as you can see, this is uh, the stage that we left off on more or less. Um you can see that like the the balloons seem to move a little more slowly, uh which is kind of interesting. And actually the graphics are definitely not as nice looking as your Oh, there was the guy's butt. He was sort of posing on the ladder for us for a sec showing off his butt. I think that the game is a little easier on uh, on Home Edition here. Here, look. We can, uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he climbs a ladder super fast. Oh, my God. Oh, that was so stupid. Okay, well, there we go. Um, I was trying to mess around there, get him to show his butt off on the ladder, and I uh, screwed myself over. Oh, my God. Kill these things before they kill us all. They're going to kill us all. Oh my god, oh, he's showing his butt off. There we go. Okay, I got it to happen. Uh, but we, we got to kill these things, man, before they kill us. But yeah, look, look, the ball seems to be moving a bit slower. Um, it was not at all uncommon for home ports of game of arcade games to be a little easier than the arcade editions. But, oh my god, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Okay, and we got to go and shoot. And shoot. Jeez, that was like, <laughs> that was actually pretty tricky to get in there. To slide in there. Um, so as I said, the Turbo Graphics uh, never really made it in North America, uh, not the way they wanted it to. I always thought of the Turbo Graphics as this like interesting, like exotic kind of like uh, gaming system, uh, because like to me, for someone who grew up on the like the Super Nintendo and I had a Sega Genesis and an NES as well, like the Turbo Graphics was like this rare system that few people you knew had ever even seen one, let alone owned one. And I certainly never played one, but I would see commercials for like Bonk's Adventure and stuff on TV as a kid, and it looked totally awesome. So I really wanted, uh, I really wanted to play Turbo Graphics, but it was just, just just this rare, like difficult to find system. It was up there with like the Neo Geo. I didn't know anyone as a kid who owned a Neo Geo. But uh, I remember seeing, like, Metal Slug being played on, like, video game shows. Do you guys remember video game shows? Like, you turn on Saturday morning, 
uh, cart like TV, and sometimes between cartoons, there'd be a show like the Electronic Playground or something, and it would just be people like reviewing games and showing you cheat codes and tips, and like they always had these like uh, these people who look like you know they were sort of like '90s skater punks who were like kind of like yo man like what's rad on the Super Nintendo this week. And they would like give you codes and stuff. Um, that's that's where I would see like the Neo Geo and sometimes the Turbo Graphics being played. I want these power ups, yes. Um, and so that's how I knew about it, but I certainly had never really even seen one. So, um, ooh, a pickle. We just got a pickle, and there's a, an owl that's going nuts. The the animals seem to move faster in the home version here, and the balloons move a heck of a lot slower. Ow! Oh God! And there's a bee. There's a Hudson Soft mascot, the bee, has shown up. Um, interesting. Um, the Turbo Graphics, by the way, was originally supposed to be a competitor to the NES, but that never really happened. It ended up, you know what it ended up being? As a competitor to the Super Famicom. Um, it was actually, in Japan, the number one competitor to the Super Famicom, which is crazy when you think about the fact that, like, it, it wasn't even really that popular in North America. But it was the main competitor in Japan. Um, which is kind of cool. And, the tur and this game, by the way, is not just a TurboGrafx-16 game, it's a TurboGrafx CD game. So, actually, and that actually makes the poor graphics here even worse. Like, I was expecting, literally, for this game to be, uh, you know, like, scene for scene, like, just the arcade version. I was thinking we might not even be able to tell the difference. I'm, to be honest, I'm a little disappointed in the graphical quality here. Like, look at the river behind me. It just looks like brown sludge. Brown and red, like, bloody sludge. Like, that's disgusting. <laughs> It's a, uh, it's a minor letdown graphically, I will say, but uh, I'm still excited to be playing it. And the Turbo Graphics CD was the first ever, the first ever CD add-on for a console, and it was the first time that video games ever had been used that that CDs had been used to store video games. That's pretty amazing, actually. I, I think I just would have assumed the Sega CD might have been the first. Although I wouldn't have staked money on that, because I'm like, I don't know, like, Philips was doing stuff around that time and 3DO, and sure, there's probably, like, some obscure system that was doing it before Sega CD. But, uh, time over! Oh, no! <laughs> we almost had the stage B2. We just ran out of time. Ugh. I hate I hate games that have time limits, because, uh, because I hate, I hate losing just because you, you were a little too slow. That, that sucks. Okay, so we really got to, like, get the lead out here. So I think the gun is going to help us speed things up here. Because the gun the gun allows you to just, like, go to town shooting at these little balls. There we go. Boom, boom. Give me a gun. Give me a gun and a shield, and I'll, I'll wipe out any stinking balloons off the face of this planet, man. I'm a balloon hunting machine. Oh, I missed that one. Okay, there we go. Boom! 44 seconds to, to spare. What is he, like some kind of like jungle adventure? He's swinging on a vine, he's like dressed up in like those... It's like old-timey like jungle adventure clothes, you know, like the, the old British gentlemen when they explored jungles. Oh god! Oh, come on! I was in the middle of shooting. We'll go ahead and continue. Um, I do like that they seem to be giving you infinite continues, by the way. I mean, maybe we have a limit and we will encounter it, but... Uh, the fact that you can select what stage to start on really means that, like, there's no reason why they shouldn't give you infinite continues. Because, like, whatever, like, you'll just, you'll just select the stage that you died on if they take, if they, if they're, like, game over, right? It's so, like, what's the point for them? From a, des from a design perspective, what's the point? Oh, there we go. We want that shield. We definitely want that shield. Yes! Okay, the shield, the shield is pretty essential, I would say. Ooh, there's another one. Oh, okay, here we go. Kill this guy. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, oh nice. We got it. Um, oh, God. Okay, so now these are all like the medium sized balls. And we get this and this. What is that bee trying to accomplish, I wonder? Okay, we'll kill this guy. Ow. The bee's touching me. Get away from me, bee. Oh, and there's a crab. Get away from me, crab. What are these animals doing? What is their end game? They're just like, I'm just going to be here and cause a ruckus. I'm just here to cause problems. They, like, they don't hurt me at all. Well, I just killed a bee. <laughs> I'll kill you again, bee. Oh, that harpoon was about to stab the bee in his stinking heart. You can use the Vulcan missile against the blocks. What is the Vulcan missile? Interesting. Oh, look, now the levels are getting pretty sophisticated. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, did any of you guys, by the way, own a TurboGrafx uh, CD? Forget about the TurboGrafx-16. Did you own a TurboGrafx-CD? 
Um, and if so, how did you come up across it? I mean, I guess it's completely possible a lot of people watching this video now, or maybe some people, maybe not a lot, but some people are from Japan or something, so to them, they're like, yeah, man, like, everyone owned a TurboGrafx CD. It was the thing you owned if you didn't own the Super Famicom. Main competitor, don't you know? Um, aw, game over. We died in Australia. Um, let's go ahead with... Oh, it, it's game over, game over. I was gonna say, let's continue one more time. Wait, that, that makes no sense. I guess it only makes sense from, like, a high score perspective. So, okay. Let's see what uh, jolly old England is like. Why not? So, even in this home console edition, you can't skip all the way to North America. I tried. It kind of cuts you off around Spain. So, they allow you to select whatever ever level you want, but, like, within... Within reason oh my god my guy won't stop firing i think i have some kind of like virus okay now he stopped kind of like in uh, Bomberman, how you can get the bomb disease and then your guy won't stop laying bombs boom 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 jolly old england we got your back bro we will save you we will save you okay let's get this guy and this guy it could have been a virus N not not like an actual virus but like a, a power upper thingy in the game or it could have just been my controller spazzing out oh damn it Damn. Um, all right. Blue balls. Oh. <laughs> I have a feeling we're not going to get too much farther than this. You know what it kind of reminds me of is Snow Bros. Like, now that the levels are becoming, like, platformy with ladders and complexity and stuff, for some reason it reminds me of Snow Bros. Which, the gameplay of this and Snow Bros could not be more different. Snow Bros is about throwing uh, snowballs. But it is also, like, a one-screen... Ooh, french fries. It is a one-screen sort of puzzly type game. Um, we have to sort of kill bad guys. Snow Bros is probably closer to, like, Bubble Bobble, though, than anything else. Okay, if only I could shoot sideways. Nope. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Get over here to the thing. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, that worked. Cool. Oh, it, the balloon hit the bird in the face. Oh, shoot. We're running out of time here. We can't be dilly-dallying. We've got to kill the balls. Kill them all! 24 seconds. Okay, I'll take it. We got that guy. Oh my god, the balls. No! No, I can't shoot! I can't shoot either! Okay, we got one. Oh, get- there we go. Seven seconds to spare. Six, five! Why was it still counting? If I had lost the level after destroying the last ball, that would have been <laughs> bull. Oh my god. Big old green ball to the face. So, uh, Pang here, Buster Bros, or Pomping World, whatever you want to call it, is one of the games in the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. Today we checked out both the arcade and the home console version. I mean, there's many other home console versions. There's, you can play this on the ZX Spectrum, the Commodore 64. I think there might be an NES version. I know there was, like, Super Pang, which is the, like, Super Nintendo version. Oh my god, look at this. This is, like, the nightmare of green balls. Get off the ladder, man. Although... Yeah! Oh, come on! It grazed my ear. Give me a break. Um, so Super Pang is on the Super Nintendo. So there's, there's many different ways you can play this game. Um, at the end of the day, though, it's one of the games of the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And so, thinking about this, you know, this must play, this idea, is this a must play? So I will say that as an arcade game, this seems like, uh, this, yeah, I mean, this totally reminds me of like Golden Age kind of, or not Golden Age, uh, what would you call it? Right after like Pac-Man and Defender and Asteroid, sort of like the second wave of arcade games where like, you know, Ninja Turtles uh, was in there and like the X-Men game and the Simpsons game. I mean, th those are like arcade masterpieces. I don't think this game is an arcade masterpiece. I think this is like a solid sort of action-y puzzle game. Um, I think, though, it's going to appeal to a very specific niche of people. I mean, all the levels are basically very similar in the sense of it's just you, you know, breaking more balloons in, like, a different environment. Certainly, there is there is complexity to the levels and stuff, like, once you, once you start getting into these higher levels um, because of the terrain that you have to fight over. Oh, my God. I'm going to die from time. Five, four, three. Stop counting, man. When I've killed the last guy, stop counting. Hey, we made it back to Spain. Um, certainly, there's, certainly there's complexity here and action and stuff to be had. But I think it's really going to appeal to a very specific niche of people. And I think, actually, the arcade version... Um, the arcade version looks so much nicer than this TurboGrafx version. I have to say, like, I was expecting this as a, as a home CD and as a, as a, a, a CD game, right? 
I was expecting this to actually like look and play very well. It plays fine. I like the fact that the balls are slowed down a little bit. Uh, it makes it a little easier and, and home console editions were known to kind of do that. Here's what the two player version looks like by the way. Um, but I am slightly disappointed that the graphics didn't look nicer. I, I think the Turbo Graphics was capable of so much more. Like, is it just me? Am I wrong? I think the Turbo Graphics is capable of so much more. So gameplay-wise, Turbo Graphics Buster Bros is just fine. Uh, but graphic-wise, I think it could have been better. Uh, at the end of the day, though, I think that this game will appeal to some people looking for puzzle games. I don't think it's necessarily uh, a must-play um, in the sense of it is uh, so fun that everyone will enjoy it, or it's so iconic and important to gaming history that you really should play it. It's it's a solid game, I will say. Solid all around. Anyway, those are my thoughts. What do you guys think of Buster Bros here, and what do you think of the arcade versus the Turbo Graphics edition? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you did own this game or you owned a TurboGrafx 16 or CD or whatever, um, I'm curious to hear about that too and what it was like back in the day. So feel free to leave uh, comments about all this jazz. You know, chime in, join me, guys. Join the conversation. Um, but whatever the case may be, whatever you think of this game, hopefully I made today entertaining for you. If you were entertained, if you did learn a little something, go ahead, like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I will be back soon with yet another game in the ongoing quest to play through the book. A thousand one video games you must play before you die. And uh, you don't want to miss out on the next game. So until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves, bust those balls, and uh, peace. Oh god! Oh my god! Balls everywhere! <laughs>